In this tutorial I'm going to cover some of the reactions of alkenes, namely testing for alkenes and the uh, polymerization of alkenes. Alkenes differ from alkanes by having a carbon-carbon double bond and that allows us to distinguish them by a chemical test. If we add bromine water to an alkene and shake it, the orange colour of the bromine water disappears, it goes colourless. We can say it decolorizes the bromine water. Alkanes don't do this. What's happened is that the two bromine atoms of the bromine molecule have added to each side of that carbon-carbon double bond. We lose the double bondness, it becomes a single, and we end up with the two bromine atoms attached to the two carbon atoms. Uh, we say that because the bromine is added on, it's an addition reaction, and the product that we get is called a dibromo compound, showing it's got two bromines attached to it. Now you may recognize some of these plastics. Uh, they are on the top left here, polyethene or polythene. We have PTFE, polytetrafluoroethene. We've got polypropene, or as it used to be called, polypropylene. Uh, along the bottom, we've got expanded polystyrene. We have PVC or polychloroethene. And we have also uh, another form of polystyrene, this time a hard polystyrene used for, for example, this yogurt pot and also for Bic Biros. What they have in common is that they're all made of long chain molecules, which have a backbone of carbon atoms with various other atoms attached to them. These are called polymers, or as we know them, plastics. In the second part of the tutorial, we're going to look at what's called addition polymerization, a reaction where very many short-chained molecules join together to make a long chain called a polymer. We're going to look at the conditions which are needed for that, which are high pressure and a catalyst. This is a picture of a polymer called polyethene. It's made up of many, many repeating units. This structure at the bottom shows a whole long chain of carbon atoms, but in fact it's made up of many repeating units, such as the one here, which is highlighted, which has got two carbons and four hydrogens. That's because it's been made from this small molecule here, called ethene. Ethene here is being called a monomer. It has a reactive double bond between the two carbons, which, when many molecules come together, they're put under pressure, and uh, a catalyst is added, they turn into a chain where the repeating units of two carbons in a row. Now, there's a particular way that we have to write these equations, which I've shown here. We show the displayed formula of the monomer on the left with an n meaning a large number and on the right hand side we show the displayed formula of the polymer which has got these trailing bonds coming from each side. The unit, the repeating unit, only has two carbons in it and we put a square bracket around the repeating unit with an N after it to show that it's been repeated many times over. It's important in your exam that you show it in this form. Many other addition polymers are made in pretty much the same way. Now this time the monomer is called propene. It's got three carbons in a row, but there's that still the carbon-carbon double bond which makes it into a reactive monomer. Here, many N of these propenes join together to make a repeating unit N times over, many times over. Whereas the monomer has got a CH3 attached instead of one of the H's, so the repeating unit has got a CH3 instead of one of the H's. And when we look at a section of the polymer, we can see that every other carbon has got a CH3 attached to it, just as if this displayed formula on the right hand side has been made into a rubber stamp and it's been stamp, 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 stamped next to each other. Here's another example. This time the monomer is called chloroethene. It looks like ethene except it's got a chlorine instead of one of the hydrogens. Many of these chloroethene monomers make a polymer called polychloroethene where the chloroethene has to be in brackets. We used to call chloroethene 
vinyl chloride and so the polymer used to be called polyvinyl chloride nowadays we often call polychloroethene by its old name PVC and as you can see the section of the polymer has a repeating unit with a chlorine on every second carbon. A final example here has in fact four fluorines instead of the four hydrogens so we call it tetra for four tetra fluoroethene and this one makes a polymer called polytetrafluoroethene and because that's so much of a mouthful it's known by its four initials PTFE. PTFE tape is used for um, sealing pipes by plumbers and it's also trade name Teflon used as non-stick coating on pans. The section of the polymer here shows that the carbons have all got uh, fluorines attached and each of the repeating units has got two carbons and four fluorines attached to them. Finally a couple of past paper questions. This question is about polymerization. Polymerization changes many small molecules into large molecules. What conditions are needed for polymerization? There are two marks going for this because there are two conditions. One of them is a high pressure and the second one is a catalyst. Look at the diagram, it shows the displayed formula of a monomer called propene. Propene's an alkene, it's unsaturated. Why is it unsaturated? This is the key here in the structure, it has a carbon-carbon double bond. So we're going to write, it has a CC double covalent bond. Finally, look at this table. It shows the displayed formula of some monomers and polymers. Complete the table and I think you can see that there are two sections missing. The first one is a displayed formula for the polymer that propene would make. Using the same style of drawing of the previous, we're going to draw a repeating unit with only two carbons in it and two trailing bonds. On that we have a hydrogen and a hydrogen because they were attached to the first carbon of the double bond. The second carbon of the double bond was attached to a carbon at the top with three hydrogens attached and a hydrogen at the bottom. We're going to put a square bracket around the whole thing and a little n after it to follow the pattern of the other example. For chloroethene we've got to draw the displayed formula of the monomer. When we look at the displayed formula of the polymer it's got two carbons. So we're going to have two carbons but we're going to replace the single bond with the original double bond. And then we're simply going to attach what is on each side of the carbon-carbon bond in the displayed formula of the polymer, so three hydrogens and a chlorine atom.